The Board of Trustees of Labour Party on Wednesday stepped in to stay the affairs of the party following the expiration of the tenure of the National Working Committee headed by former National Chairman Julius Abure. In a statement issued by Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Sebastian Ejiofo, Labour Party said the step was to avoid a leadership vacuum. By this situation, the Labour Party BOT ignored the National Convention of the Party held in Inewe Anambra State, which re-elected Julius Abure as its National Chairman for a second term. The convention was reportedly held in the absence of key members of the party, including the party's presidential candidate in the 2023 general election, Peter Obi, Governor, Governor of Abia State, Dr. Alex Oti, and senators of the party from Anambra State, Victor Ume and Tony Mwe. Interesting. Well, for greater insight, we are now being joined by Aki Oshutokun, a political scientist and former director general of Obidati Presidential Council. Good morning, Mr. Aki Oshutokun. Good to have you on the morning show today. Good morning. And so I was asking you to comment about, I mean, basically what you make of what is uh, happening with the Labour Party, given the role uh, that you played uh, during the presidential campaign. And given the fact that uh, the convention that reportedly held in Ninewe in Anambra State has offered Mr. Peter Obi, whom you worked for, uh, a presidential, you know, a, a right of first refusal as the candidate of the Labour Party in the 2027 uh, general election. But here we are, the BOT of the party has reported, reportedly taken over the reins of affairs of the party. What do you make of all these troubles bedeviling the Labour Party? And how do you think that it might affect your man, Mr. Peter Obi, who, by the way, was not at the convention? Yeah, you know, the fact that it was, it was not at the conf, 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 um, convention uh, speaks louder than words. You know, and of course, uh, promising him uh, with the candidacy of the party in the 2027 election is a Greek gift. And I'm sure that it's not, it's not uh, within their part. This, and this is part of the problems they have. They are not in a position to offer anybody any ticket for now. The process of electing the, 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 go, the presidential candidate of the party is well laid out. You are going to get, you will get the ticket from the primaries. It seems like the National Executive Council does not equate the primaries that, you know, will have several delegates who will vote. So this is a kind of, uh, the people we are dealing with is a kind of the problem we are seeing. I mean, you, you see, I'm, I'm, I mean, are we now to assume that the man who said so, the chairman, I mean, the purported chairman, does he know how the presidential candidate of the cat, uh, of a party, you know, uh, emerges? Look, I've not had, you know, when we were campaigning, I've not had a very good uh, uh, opinion. Well, I don't have any high opinion, you know, of the Labour Party that you know we found on ground. We were, in any case, we were strangers to the party, so I don't. Uh, you know, the way it is behaving is very typical of Nigerian parties, organizations, and individuals. You know, this idea of uh, desperation to, you know, not to leave the stage when the ovation is loud enough that you might get some, some goodwill. You know, this is seat tight syndrome. Uh, you know, now, but it has created another problem for the party. Probably now we are going to have a, uh, three factions, at least on paper. You have, uh, you know, the authentic ones, uh, um, those of us who do not, you know, accept, you know, the, the convention that they did. I will also have, uh, we will soon have uh, the authentic uh, convention that will produce, you know, the authentic um, officials of the party. So when this to happen, then we are going to have three factions. Uh, although those men, the other two factions 
are largely on paper. Uh, there is no substance to them. They are a nuisance. So maybe you find another plan, another another nuisance, you know, uh, uh, to be to to make them true. You know, you have the Apapa, so-called Apapa function, uh, la midi Apapa faction. Now you are going to have probably Julius Aburi faction, and then you are going to have you know uh, the substantial you know um, officials of the of the party. So uh, it doesn't bode well for the party, uh, but. I guess this is a kind of uh, thing. So it, it has come to a stage where uh, we need to purge ourselves you know, of those whose thinking and orientation does not conform with our own, you know, uh, our own expectations. So I expect that uh, one of the options open to us is to purge the party you know, of people. People, I mean, during the election, who so, uh, are, you know, more or less tolerating them. You know, the behavior, kind of behavior that you, are, that you see them at the national and state uh, chapters, you know, uh, are not the kind of uh, behavior you expect from a party that has, you know, uh, a vested interest, a genuine interest, you know, in winning the elections. There are so, so many other things that, uh, will come out of the audit that the presidential candidate has had instituted. So when the outcome of the investigation comes, I'm sure it will also clarify further the situation and expect, I mean, and explain why things are going this way. Uh, the way they are behaving is another typical Nigerian political party. Uh, in their case, sometimes worse. Uh, because most of these parties, they are shell parties. Uh, it's only politicians who are stranded or who cannot uh, bear the direction on which their own party is going that opts out of these two party, disease parties, you know, looking for a platform to contest. Now, what I'm then they are then open you know, to the allegation of defection, serial defection. But what if you don't have anything to in common with any party that is, <clears throat> that is on ground? So you may then have to, you know, uh, form a party, you know, on your own or whatever. But I've also again proposed the idea of uh, independent candidature which which is responding it will respond you know to the, this kind of problems that we we have, we have. you know <clears throat> that a man like peter Obi, for instance everybody knows him all over the country there are many interest groups that are in, you know open for uh, that he will be the president of the country one day or the other so these are the people that will uh, uh, eventually, especially the obedience who more or less represent the younger generation, you know, in the party. Uh, so, uh, so far, as I mean, the NLC, I understand that the NLC was the organization, you know, that established the party or gave back to the party, the Labour Party, much earlier, you know, weeks or months or years ago. So if somebody who gives birth to you, you know, is taking this position, mm. uh, then it questions on legitimacy. And then, of course, if the NLC, uh, which we assume, right, that the members will boost, you know, the potential voters of the party, if they are withdrawing their support, then potentially they are taking away votes, you know, that they will have cast for, you know, uh, anybody who's interested in contesting on the platform of the, of the Labour Party. So you take all, the, all this into consideration and, you know, we really don't know where we go from here. Thank you. Um, if our 
You are going to, yeah? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, so you continue. I wanted to ask a question, especially because you're talking about, because you've spoken about there being three factions, um, or it's looking like we might get three factions of the Labour Party. We've often heard Nigerian politicians describe political parties as a vehicle which to get into office or, or their destination. Now, those three factions, would they be the Abure, the Apapa, and the Obedient Faction? And when you talk about the third faction being an authentic faction, um, do you believe your faction or the OB or the obedient faction being the authentic one when, um, as you said, you were strangers to the Labour Party in the last elections? And is it possible due to these issues with the Labour Party that we will see Mr. Peter Obi return to one of his former parties, APGA or the PDP or maybe form a party of his own? Well, you know, um, I don't like, uh, you know, building up people into a larger-than-life uh, phenomenon. But, you know, without Peter Obi, there is a Labour Party, you know, in this electoral cycle. If you take away Peter Obi and his followers and supporters away from the party, from the Labour Party, uh, essentially, there's not, no, nothing like a Labour Party, as far as I can see it. Uh, most of the votes, I mean, if you look, the, the elections, the outcome of the elections, <coughs> you know, says all you need to know about the party. Uh, the role of the Labour Party as such, you know, uh, in, the, in the elections, in the outcome of the elections is really... Let's say disappointing. So, uh, we will we'll just take one step <clears throat> at a time and see what goes. 2027 is far away. So, it gives us a, a lot of time, you know, to decide what we want to make of the situation uh, we, we find ourselves in. The Nigerian public, they are very perceptive, and I'm sure that. Uh, the position that we have taken is the one that is supported by the Nigerian public. Nobody can hold any party organization to ransom. I was reading the other day that somebody was writing that um, the INEC, you know, doesn't need to be present at the convention of the party where the officials are elected. That they don't, well, that is news to me. Uh, an electoral act was even cited to support it. But of course, logic, as I said, that is new to me and also begs uh, uh, logic. How, is, how can you ask the regulator of the party, right, of political parties in the country, you know, how do you find a situation in which they are not in the party, um, at the convention, that they do not come? The presence here is indispensable and it serves for, to authenticate, you know, the outcome of the elections. Were you to go to court, for instance, thereafter, INEC will be the first agency or you know, the individual that they will call to state its position on, on what has happened. They are going to call them and ask them about the conduct of the primaries. Were they to tell the court that they were not there. Uh, I think from experience, you know, uh, in the past few years, I think that ends, you know, uh, whatever ambition, you know, those who did a kangaroo convention, you know, can go. All right, Mr. Mr. Oshitoko, you, you call the convention kangaroo. But I'm interested um, in your thoughts. Uh, this is the first part of my question. Uh, what do you what do you think? What's your own position on the ownership of the Labour Party? Uh, Mr. Aburi has spoken, you know, glowingly about the fact that uh, the the NLC uh, folks are just trying to uh, uh, work as imposters; that they have no role whatsoever, you know, to play uh, in the Labour Party that he leads. Uh, but here you are saying that it, it, it was a kangaroo election. So, who do you think? Owns the Labour Party. Uh, there is evidence out there, uh, reportedly, that the registration of the party was actually done 
uh, by the Nigerian Labour Congress, you know, to have that party as the party of workers, as the, as the party, you know, of the people. Who owns Labour Party by your understanding? And then the second part of my question is to have your, is to, if you don't mind, sir, is to have your thoughts uh, regarding what has happened uh, in Senegal, where uh, 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 a third force of, of, of some sort, you know, emerged in producing the president of the country. Youth power, uh, new thinking, and things like that. Uh, a lot of people are trying to equate that with the obedient movement, you know, largely propelled by the youth, and then having somebody who came third in the last election, you know, and having the possibility of him running again and possibly, you know, uh, 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 doing better than he did last year. What are your thoughts on how Faye emerged as the president of Senegal using youthful power, using protest votes? Well, you know, there's, it came to me as a pleasant surprise. You know, because the fear was, you know, as a, a months ago, Saki Mal, you know, the, the, the president, the lame, lame dog president now, who is on his way out, you know, made a very categorical statement about uh, insinuating that he was not ready to leave the stage. He wanted to manipulate uh, the constitution, you know, for him to seek another time. He was so incarcerated and stubborn, you know. So what, what was it that changed overnight? My own presumption is that there is a power behind the throne, you know, that, is, that has that kind of the capacity to exercise, you know, uh, the pressure for the president to allow what has happened. And I suspect that that power behind the, uh, behind the throne is France, right? Uh, I, I don't know well, of course, let's just say that as at the time that the uh, president was taking, the, was introducing crisis to the party, many people would have spoken to him, statesmen, colleagues, you know, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I think the most impactful, I don't know, I'm speculating, I don't know that, but of all uh, people who have vested interest in the political stability of, uh, of Senegal, the France, France will reach number one. Uh, and I think that they were the one who pushed, uh, you know, the present president to let go, you know, and that, that is where we are. But that, that doesn't diminish the significance of what has taken place there. I mean, you know, that the 44-year-old person, he has become the president, uh, who was not known as one of, <laughs> really any uh, politician to record with. It shows, of course, that Senegal is, uh, uh, is trending towards what Nigeria was doing in 2002-2003 until it was aborted, you know, by powers that are above us, aborted by INEC specifically, and of course the judiciary. Look, it was, Obi was, uh, before the announcement of the election, he was training as the kind of candidate that people in other parts of Africa wanted to emulate. As a matter of fact, I think they gave them names, you know, along that line. So he stimulated that interest, I mean, especially by youth that, look, we can do it. Yeah, and that, of course, also, you know, has a lot to do you know, with uh, what, what has taken place in Nigeria. But of, again, but it was aborted, you know, and, uh, you know, which has set Nigeria a long way back, you know, in terms of political development, you know, and political stability. Uh, so, uh, it's a good. It's good for I mean, for Senegal. It's good for for for, for Africa. But there's the, there's also the, the president 
the precedent of sorts, you know, was laid by President Goodluck Jonathan, you know, in 2015, when he, you know, personally, you know, even before all the results of the election were in, called General Muhammad Buhari, the candidate of the APC, to thank him. Uh, now, that was a great act of statesmanship. And I'm sure that that also, uh, that may also feature in the thinking of the incumbent president of Senegal, you know, to, get, to go the, to tour the path of uh, honesty, you know, uh, and truthfulness. So, and I'm sure that maybe in other parts, I expect and I hope that other African countries, you know, are listening and uh, <clears throat> would tell the part that had been set uh, by OB and now the guy in Senegal. In the case of Nigeria, it's a very big disappointment. But we all know that uh, the abortion you know, uh, took place at the level of uh, maybe the INEC and the judiciary. Mm. But that is by the way. Whatever you think of it, uh, we have a de facto and a de jure president uh, as we speak. And we can only hope, uh, you know, uh, hope him, you know, well, that pray that he succeeds. You know, that hope. I, I was also mentioning the fact that you know, legit legitimacy can be earned, you, no matter how you came to power, right? You can earn legitimacy by the kind of governance you instituted immediately, mm. right? That is on 20... But on the contrary, you know, what we saw was uh, the specter of a president being inaugurated without knowing practically nothing about the policy it was going to take on oil subsidy. Now, if you were elected, uh, the INEC pronounced him uh, the president-elect sometime in March. And yes. there you have a gap of between when he was uh, pronounced and when he was sworn in. Yes, sir. That is enough time, right, to single out something like oil subsidy. Mm. Uh, this is the first ta task you are going to, the challenge you are going to have to con confront. And then, you know, all the things will probably be in place. Thank you, sir. That will preempt the kind of Thank crisis. you, sir. Can we, yeah. I, I'd like us to focus back on the Labour Party and just also hone in on Mr. C's question earlier, which was about who owns the Labour Party now? Similar to what I asked, as you said, there are three factions. Um, why would your faction or the obedient faction, which, as you said, were the stranger faction, be the authentic faction of the Labour Party? And also, kind of going off of what you said on taking a leaf from Senegal's book when it comes to youth representation and youth candidates. In 2027, our next general elections, Mr. Peter Obi will be in his late 60s. Do you think he will still be able to represent a youth demographic as a man in his late 60s? Well, you know, 67, relatively, that's still a young well, not so young, but relative to the average age of presidents we have in uh, Africa, uh, that is relatively, that is not uh, an old age. But we'll get to that bridge when we're going. It's 2027, it's still far away. And of course, you know, it really doesn't look to me like somebody who is going to be debilitated, you know, by old age anytime soon. So <laughs> I'm sure that it will only increase, his appeal will only increase from now until 2027. Now you spoke about the role of NLC on, and the ownership of the Labour Party. The ownership of the party today are the members, right? Okay, you have strategic uh, members, stakeholders, 
And on top of those strategic stakeholders lie the, nation, uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress. And of course, that it was the same, I think a judgment was given in that respect, that it was the NLC right, that, seek, that went to establish uh, the Labour Party. And it, that, all, that is, of course, again, logical to me that using the name Labour Party, you know, is itself an implication uh, of the affiliation or the pedigree, you know, of the Labour, I mean, the Nigeria Labour Congress from which it emanated. But as I say, I think there was a judgment in that respect, uh, you know, as sanctioning or approving, you know, the comment or the position of the Labour, Labour Congress as regards the ownership of the party. But, see, judgments or rule of law in Nigeria today uh, has not attracted the kind of the confidence that ordinarily one should have you know, in the judiciary. So, uh, even if you have a good case, you know, uh, and even if your opponent has no case at all, we have found situations in which, uh, you know, the judiciary turned black into white, you know, and white to black. So we will see as it goes on. I mean, I, 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 I will see as we go on, but in a way, right, it is to the advantage of uh, APC and PDP for Labour Party to disappear. You know, <laughs> that is the point. Of course, you yourself the obligation uh, not to uh, that to happen. As I said, you know, we are going to make all efforts to um, get a party, you know, that allies with the vision, you know, of part, of of, of Obi, Peter Obi, the obedience and the younger generation who powered is who powered him, you know to become the very significant political figure that he, I mean, that he has become. So, uh, as I said, but I don't know, uh, you can now draw your conclusions. First, right. the convention that they said they had, yeah. the leader of the party was not there. Nobody from Labour who constituted the trustee of the party was there. INEC was not there. So you see, so you then have to uh, how you consider that uh, that kind of convention a legitimate one, you know, beats my imagination. Okay, all right, Mr. Mr. Shitoko, that that's fine. But let's just use the last one minute, you know, to touch on uh, what you already mentioned uh, that it will be to the advantage of the APC and the PDP if Labour Party disappears or you know uh, becomes you know non-functional uh, politically speaking. Uh, how do you think that this will all go well for uh, the chances of Mr. Peter Obi in 2027 if he decides to run? Given the fact that, you know, the person of the president, Ashwaj Bola Ametinubu, you know, sort of thrives uh, when opposition is in disarray. You, you saw what happened in 2023, uh, you know, PDP in disarray. Even within Labour Party, there were pockets, you know, of uh, issues. The Aburi, the... Uh, Labidia Papa faction, etc. If Labour is not able to resolve uh, its issues, don't you think that that's almost like handing Ashwajibola Ametinubu a second term, even right from 2024? <laughs> Very briefly. <laughs> Very briefly, please. I don't know where, unless you are God, you know, playing God, I don't know who will be uh, the president of Nigeria in 2027. You know, we all live one day at the time. None of us knew when, you know, uh, God will call us home. So when people talk about 2027, I think it should be put in quote and unquote. 2027 is a long way to go. Uh, the first prayer we should seek for is the survival and stability of Nigeria in the first place. So that, uh, you know, you have a country uh, for whom leadership you want to contest. Uh, you know, but uh, the 
Labour Party is not the only party in existence. And as I said, there's also the opportunity, would, because we're under the, uh, you know, the, the false major, the, the, we are compelled, right, to seek a political party or you form your own party. So we have options, you know, should the uh, Labour Party and the, uh, what they have just done, what they've just done in, uh, in the we stand, mm. then of course um, we we'll have to, uh, we'll, well, there's no, essentially there will be no meeting point, you know, uh, between those of us here and such uh, leadership. Yes, yeah, sir. So, As I said. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, you leave. It, it seems that we might be yeah. looking at Mr. Pichobi going to the fourth political party in his political career. I just want to thank you so much, sir, for spending time with us this morning. Uh, Mr. Oshin Tokmo, it was so nice to have you on the morning show. Yeah.